Good evening and welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Jerome Aguian and here's some of the top stories we have for you tonight. The Virgin Islands prepares for Gaston. It's the first day of school on St. Croix. And if I can't get a drink, I'm going under the boardwalk. These stories and more are up next on News Channel 8. News Channel 8 is sponsored by AT&T. Centennial is joining AT&T for greater coverage, more innovation, and better service. And in our top story tonight, it seems as though we just can't get a break. We narrowly dodged hurricanes Danielle and Earl, and now it looks like we could be possibly staring straight down the barrel at another storm by the name of Gaston. Now, Tropical Depression number 9 became named Gaston last evening at about, about 6 or 7 in the evening. And right now, the center of Tropical Storm Gaston was located near latitude 13.5 north, longitude 38.2 west. Gaston is moving towards the west at a very slow pace of 9 miles per hour, which reminds us of another hurricane that came through here one faithful September. Maximum sustained winds remain near 40 miles per hour at the moment, with higher gusts gradually strengthening is predicted in the forecast in the next 48 hours. The tropical storm force winds extend upward at about 70 miles from the eye of the storm, and the estimated minimum central pressure of Ga tropical storm Gaston is 1,005 isobars of barometric pressure. Now looking at the future, the predicted future of tropical storm Gaston, it will remain on a very straight western course from where it is right now, which puts it closer to the, west, the, the lesser Antilles as we get into next week. At this time, it's predicted on Sunday at about 2 a.m. to become a Category 1, and then by Tuesday at 2 a.m., it will have graduated to a Category 2. It's a little too early to predict where it will go at this time. It will more than likely make a northern turn, but whether or not it will make that turn before or after it gets near the Virgin Islands, we can't yet to say. It's expected to come in our direction towards the mid to late part of next week. So all of those tropical preparations that you made for Hurricane Earl, you might possibly want to just keep them right where they are because we could have a visitor named Gaston as early as next week. And in other news, we're still looking for a murderer on St. Croix. News Channel 8's Wes Small has that story in your Crime Stoppers report. Thanks a lot, Jerome. It is time for your Crime Stoppers report. We are still trying to get 30-year-old Edwin Encarnacion off the streets. Folks, ever since we've been in emergency procedure, we have really gotten behind on a lot of criminal activities. Melody Rames has sent me a lot of things in our email that we are just backed up with. We still have crimes, we still have suspects, but the number one is for this manhunt, this guy to get off the street. 30-year-old Edwin Encarnacion, he's a fugitive from justice. He is wanted in connection with the murder of 45-year-old Jorge Parisia. You might remember that. He was killed in that residential um, fire. We believe that he killed Parisia and then set his body on fire. That was in a state whim on August the 14th. If you have seen Edwin Encarnacion, do not approach him. He is believed to be armed and dangerous. Or if you know who has been hi hiding him, then you need to call 911 or 1-800-222-TIPS. Also, I also want to tell you about this. He has been cited in several communities. They almost had him. They almost had him a couple of days ago. They were sightings that he had a wig on. But as police got to the suspect, they found out it was the guy's real hair, and it wasn't him. On St. John, Police are still seeking the killers of businessman Juan Ayala. You might remember him. Ayala died from multiple gunshot wounds on January 5th, 2009. We're looking for two perpetrators, a black man, one, a black man with braided hair. Please help us ID these killers. Minimum reward is $1,250. Last but not least, on St. Thomas, August 27th at 1 a.m., police responded to an armed robbery in Pillsbury Heights West. That was in Smith Bay. The victim, Steve Francis, indicated he was approached by three armed males who tried to rob him in the driveway. A neighbor saw what was going on and also fired with his licensed firearm at the suspects. We believe he hit one of them. Please help us get these thugs off the street. 
please help us get Edwin Encarnacion off the streets of St. Croix for the murder of Jorge Parisia. With that, please be safe with all the storms coming in our way. Please look out for one another, because you can bet your bottom dollar that the bad guys are not sleeping. Don't forget to call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. Thanks, Wes. Well, for most kids on St. Croix, it was the first day of school. News Channel 8's Wes Small checks out the scene of what's happening at Clotto Marco. Thanks a lot, Jerome, and please excuse the absence of the tie. It is hot out here, and I'm with a parent. We're at Clotto Marco School, and I promised Principal Kent Moorhead that I'd come back and check on um, the school the first day, but him and the assistant principal, they're, they're going through their meetings and everything. I was just inside talking to the office workers, ma'am, and they said that they have a couple of glitches, but the first day of school is, is going pretty well. Now, you're a parent, and you have um, a, a, a child here, and what grade are they in? His name is Cameo Russell. He's in the fourth grade. Fourth grade, and you got your little book schedule out here, what to expect, and you were saying 14 books. Yeah, 14 composition books for the third to the sixth grade. Things have changed, I guess, when we were going to school. Huh? Yes, they have changed dramatically. Well, you know, at least um, that you serve as the perfect parent role model today. You're here with your children, and you you got the schedule. Now you know what you have to go get, and I'm sure you're going to shop around for the best prices and give them the tools necessary that they can achieve their way to college, I guess. Yes, I am. That is my job, to prepare them for this educational system. All right. How did the storm uh, fare with you and your family? Oh, very well. We did very well. Do you have current? Yes, we do. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for sharing. I want to say one thing. Yes, ma'am. For parents who have children with special needs, please be sure that your IEPs, which is the individual education plans are up to date. Make sure that your child or children are getting the services that they need. An IEP is a federal document. It holds a lot of weight and the government are to render the services that your child or children need. Thank you very much. That was very well put. Thank you for saying that. With that, we're in Fredericksted on the first day of school at Claudio Marco. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8.